Hey Defenders, this is Doug Burks with Security Onion Solutions. I started Security Onion in 2008 to provide a free and open source platform to help you peel back the layers of your enterprise and make your adversaries cry. Today, Security Onion has been downloaded over 1 million times and is being used by security teams around the world for threat hunting, enterprise security monitoring, and log management. In this video, we're going to take a look at our new Security Onion Hybrid Hunter platform. This is a platform that we've been working on for the last couple of years, and we recently released Hybrid Hunter Beta 1, the first beta release of Hybrid Hunter. We put out a blog post which contains some information about that, so let's go and take a look at that. So from securityonion.net, I click on the blog link, and then if I scroll down just a little bit, we'll see this blog entry for Hybrid Hunter Beta 1. So the first thing we should discuss is why the name Hybrid Hunter? What does that actually mean? If you're familiar with Security Onion as a platform, you know that we are traditionally based on Ubuntu. And most of our software components are packaged in traditional Ubuntu packages. Now, over the years, we've had many requests from our community to support not just Ubuntu, but also CentOS. And because of that, we started this new platform called Hybrid Hunter uh, that would be based on containers. So instead of using Ubuntu packages, we use containers, which are much more easily used across different Linux distributions like Ubuntu and CentOS. The next thing to talk about in terms of Beta 1 is that this release moves us to the Elastic Stack version 7 and we begin to embrace Elastic Common Schema or ECS. This is a great way to be more interoperable with other platforms because we're using a common schema. That means that we have similar field names and data types and that makes it much easier for other tools to integrate with Security Onion and vice versa. This also means that we have redesigned our dashboards to help with this ECS compatibility. And so you'll see a new version of our dashboards. And in addition, these, these dashboards are more streamlined. They should be faster in larger deployments and we'll see that in the demo in a few minutes. The next thing that we want to highlight about Hybrid Hunter is the introduction of the Security Onion console. In this initial release, the Security Onion console is mainly focused on user authentication and user administration, but you'll see more features being added to the Security Onion console over the next few releases. Now we do have an ISO image available for Hybrid Hunter Beta 1 and that's the easiest way to get started. So we'll click this ISO link and we'll simply follow the instructions here. In this video, we're going to be looking at evaluation mode. And so our hardware requirements are going to be a minimum of 12 gigabytes of RAM, four CPU cores, two network interfaces, and 100 gigabytes of storage. So in order to get started, we would download this ISO image. We would then want to verify that ISO image using the MD5 or SHA hashes available there, and then follow these instructions. So we're gonna boot the ISO image in a machine with the hardware specs necessary. Then we're gonna follow the prompts in the installer, reboot, log in with a username of onion and whatever password you set in the installer, follow the prompts, and then we can proceed to the quick start guide. So that's kind of our overview of what we're about to do here. So let's create a new virtual machine for Hybrid Hunter. So here's my new virtual machine wizard. This is, of course, on VMware Workstation Pro. This process should look very similar if you're using VMware Fusion or VirtualBox or some other virtualization technology. The overall steps should be pretty similar. So I'm going to choose Typical and click Next. I'm going to choose Installer Disk Image File. I'm gonna browse out to my Hybrid Hunter ISO image and click Next. Now this ISO image is based on CentOS. 
So CentOS 7 64-bit, and we click Next. And we'll call this Hybrid Hunter Beta 1. We'll click Next. Remember that we do need uh, 100 gigabytes of storage. Click Next. We do need to customize our hardware here. So in terms of memory, I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 16 gigabytes. Remember that our, our minimum requirement for evaluation mode was 12 gigabytes of RAM, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and set 16. For processors, I do need four processors. I do need two network adapters, so I'll add a second one. So now I have my second network adapter and I'll set that to a custom interface and I'll make that VMNet 10. So now I've got my 16 gigabytes of RAM, I've got my four processors, I've got my two network adapters with one of them set to NAT and one of them set to VMNet 10. At this point, I've got everything that I need for this virtual machine so I can click close and click finish. Now I'm ready to power on this virtual machine. And I'll simply select the default option here to install Security Onion Hybrid Hunter 1.2.1. And we press the enter key to begin the installation process. At this point, we are prompted with a warning. This ISO image is going to destroy all the data and all partitions on whatever drives are attached to the system. So if we're ready to proceed, we type the entire word yes and we press enter. Now we're prompted to set a password for the Onion user. So I'll set a password and confirm it. And now the installer has everything that it needs to partition that virtual hard drive and perform an automated installation of Hybrid Hunter to those new partitions. So we'll give this a few minutes to complete. Okay, at this point, the installer is complete. We press enter to reboot. We are ready to log in to our new installation. Remember from our guide here that we're going to log in using the username of Onion and the password that we just set. So I'm gonna log in using the username of Onion and my password. And notice that it launches immediately into setup. Are you sure you want to continue? We press enter to say yes. Now we need to set a host name for this installation. So I'm going to call this Hybrid Hunter and press enter. Now we need to select our management NIC. This is gonna be the network interface that's connected to the network. It has an IP address. It's able to reach out to the internet. And so here I'm going to choose ENS33. So to select that, I'm going to press the space bar and then press enter to accept that. Now we need to choose how to set up this management interface and we want to choose a static IP. So that's already selected, we'll simply press enter. We're gonna put in this IP address. In this case, we're gonna set this management interface to the IP address of 192.168.204.248. We then press enter to accept it, and we next need to enter the bit mask for the subnet. We'll accept the default of 24. And now we need to put in our gateway. So for me, that's 192.168.204.2. Next, our DNS server. Again, for me, that's 192.168.204.2. And a search domain, I'll simply leave that as the default and press enter. Now I need to create a username for my new admin user. So the Onion account that we just logged in as that was simply a temporary account that's going to be disabled as soon as we create this new admin account. So I'll call this Doug. I'll create a password and confirm that password. Now we're ready to choose our install type. 
So for this video, we're going to focus on the evaluation mode. So we'll choose the eval options. We use the down arrow to go down to eval. We press the space bar to select it and we press enter to accept it. Our next option here is relating to the operating system patch schedule. So in terms of the underlying CentOS operating system, it can automatically install updates if we choose to do so, and that's the default option here. We'll simply accept the default by pressing enter. Next, we need to add network interfaces to the monitor interface or the sniffing interface. Notice that ENS33, which was our management interface, is excluded from this list. The only thing left is ENS34, so we'll simply press the spacebar to select it and press enter to accept it. Next, we specify our home net. By default, this is set to RFC 1918 private address space. We simply accept that default by pressing enter. Next, we're prompted that we're about to select services, and the more services that we enable, the more RAM is going to be required. So we press enter, and here's the optional components that we can enable or disable. We have Grafana, OS Query, Wazoo, The Hive, Playbook, and Strelka. For this evaluation mode installation, let's simply focus our efforts on Grafana and Wazoo and The Hive, and then we'll disable the rest of those. So let's disable OS Query, let's disable Playbook, and let's disable Strelka. So now we press enter to accept those options. Now, as we talked about before, in this beta one release, we include the Security Onion console, which includes user authentication and administration. And so we need to create an administrator account for that web interface, and that requires an email address. So I'm going to put in doug at example.com. I'm gonna create a password and confirm that password. This new Security Onion console uses strict cookie enforcement. And so we have to choose how we're going to access that web interface. Are we gonna access it by IP address? Are we gonna access it by a host name or something else? So in this case, we're simply going to access it by IP address. So we'll accept this default option by pressing enter. At this point, we've put in all the information that setup needs, so we're prompted to continue by selecting yes, so we press enter. Okay, the installer has now completed, so we can press enter to reboot. At this point, we've completed our Hybrid Hunter installation. Let's take a look at our documentation to see what our next steps are. So at this point, we have followed the prompts to configure the system. We proceed to the quick start guide. This quick start guide then tells us that we need to adjust our firewall rules using SO allow. So by default, our host base firewall only allows connections to port 22, but we'd like to be able to connect to the web interface so that we can log in to our new Security Onion console. So in order to do that, we're going to run SO allow. We're gonna choose A for the analyst option, and we're gonna put in the IP address that we're gonna connect from. SO allow will then create the necessary firewall rules to allow that traffic and will then be ready to fire up a web browser and log into Security Onion console. So now let's log in using the username and password that we specified. And now let's run sudo SO allow. Put in our password. And we want to choose A for analyst. 
Now I want to put in my IP address that I want to connect from, which in my case is 192.168.204.1. Now SO allow is generating the firewall rules necessary and then it will create a whitelist entry inside of Wazoo so that Wazoo will not generate any active responses against our known good IP address. This may take up to a minute so we'll give it a little bit of time to complete. Okay, now that SO allow is complete, let's go over to our web browser and see if we can connect to it. So putting in the IP address of my Hybrid Hunter installation, I'm prompted to accept that certificate. And now we're prompted by our new Security Onion console. This is where we're going to authenticate using the email address and corresponding password that we specified. So I'll put in Doug at example.com and my password. And I'm now logged in to Security Onion console. So on the left hand side, we see that Security Onion console manages our PCAP jobs and sensors. If you tried out previous versions of Hybrid Hunter, you may remember Sensoroni, which included this functionality here. All of that's now been rolled into Security Onion Console. Because we are managing authentication with Security Onion Console now, you can go to Administration and Users and you can see those user accounts. You can add new user accounts, you can manage them, whatever you need to do. Now let's take a look at Kibana. So we click the Kibana link and that spawns a new browser tab and it loads up Kibana. If you're familiar with our existing Kibana dashboards, you'll notice that these new Kibana dashboards look a little bit different. They have been streamlined, they have been redesigned to work much better, especially on large enterprise networks where you're dealing with many, many millions of logs. The first thing that you'll notice here is that we have our dashboards grouped into categories. So for example, you might want to start with the alert category. And inside of the alert category, we're going to have different modules. For example, Suricata and Zeek and Wazoo. Of course, Suricata and Zeek are based on network traffic. So if I went to Suricata, I should see some IDS alerts coming from Suricata monitoring my sniffing interface. If I click on the Zeek module, I should see Zeek notices coming from Zeek monitoring that sniffing interface. And you'll see there we have some Zeek notices for invalid server cert and also for this CVE 2020 unknown X509 curve. So that's our alert modules. Now let's go back to the home dashboard and let's take a look at our next event category which is file. So under file we have two modules we have Strelka and we have Zeek. In this case we do not have Strelka currently enabled so all of these files should be coming from Zeek monitoring the network traffic on our sniffing interface. So you can see there the different file names that it's seeing, the different sizes of files and the different mime types seen in those files. Now let's go back to our home dashboard and we can take a look at our host event category. Again, we see Wazoo, but we also see OS query and we did not enable OS query in this installation, so there should not be anything there. Let's go back to our home dashboard. And finally, let's go to our network event category. And so this is going to show all of those Zeek logs that come from Zeek sniffing our network traffic on our sniffing interface. And so it gives us a broad overview here on the network dashboard itself, but then there are also individual dashboards for individual Zeek logs like the connection log. So we could click into the connections dashboard and we'd see the detail of source IPs, destination IPs, destination port and connection state and so on and so forth. We might want to go to the DNS dashboard and take a look at the Zeek DNS logs. Again, showing the same source IP, destination IP and destination port information, but also sh showing things 
specific to DNS, like the response code name, or the actual DNS query, or the answer that came back in that DNS response. We might then want to go to the HTTP dashboard and see all of these Zeek HTTP logs. Again, kind of starting off with source IP, destination IP, destination port, but then moving on to some HTTP specific fields such as user agent, method, virtual host, and URI. Now let's see what it looks like when we want to see logs in a little bit more detail. Here I am back at the home dashboard and we see all of our different data sets. And if I wanted to really drill into my HTTP logs and see them in detail, one option is I could notice that my, my data sets are hyperlinked, meaning that I could click on this HTTP and that's gonna take me to a new dashboard. Now that new dashboard is going to show me source IP, destination IP, and destination port, as we've seen in previous dashboards, but it's also going to show me this log panel at the bottom, which is going to allow me to drill into these logs and see the individual fields inside the logs. So for example, if I look at this first log and I click the arrow here to drill into the log itself, then I can see all of the fields that are in that log entry. Even further, if I wanted to pivot to full packet capture, I could click on the hyperlink for this underscore ID field. So when I click on that, that's gonna take me to Security Onion Console, and it's gonna go and retrieve the full packet capture for that TCP stream. And there you can see the get request and the web server's response. And notice they are color coded, so the request is highlighted in blue and the response is highlighted in red. And of course, you could download that as a PCAP if you wanted to. So lots of really great capabilities there. That's a brief overview of Kibana, but now let's go back to our original Security Onion Console tab and let's take a look at the next tool that's listed under Kibana, and that's Grafana. So Grafana is used to monitor the health of Hybrid Hunter. So if we notice that we're prompted to log in here, if we go back to our quick start guide, it's gonna tell us that currently for Grafana, we need to log in with a special username and password. So if I go to Grafana and I put in admin and Augusta, and I log in, I can then click this dashboards icon and then go to manage and choose eval mode and then choose evaluation mode. And now that's going to show me all of the health information about all of the different components inside of Hybrid Hunter. Everything from the hardware itself, such as CPU and disk and things like that, to components like Zeek and Suricata and our full packet capture. So lots of really great information there about how your system is doing and that's really going to help you keep an eye on your Hybrid Hunter deployments and monitor the health of them going forward. And so when, when something happens, you'll be able to log into Grafana and you'll be able to tell based on these visualizations here. Now let's go back to Secure Den Console and let's take a look at another tool that's listed here and that's the Hive. So again, the Hive prompts for credentials and if we go back to our quick start guide, we'll notice that the Hive, we need to log in as Hive Admin. So we'll do that here. So now we're logged into the Hive and you can think of the Hive as the place where your alerts are going to go in order for you to turn them into cases and you're tracking those cases to their completion. So this is the tool that you're going to use for your incident response cycle to manage the case all the way through its entire life cycle from beginning to end. So you can start with alerts. You see them listed here on the side. You can also go to the alerts tab at the top and you can drill into these. You can preview them and you can get more information about these alerts. Uh, if you decide that this is a true positive and you want to turn this into a case, you can do that. 
Uh, so you can imagine the possibilities here of having your entire security operations center working out of the hive and generating cases that multiple SOC analysts can work from. They can store their indicators. They can store all the information that they're collecting as a part of the incident response process and then tracking that case to its completion. So you see how all of these components are coming together in Hybrid Hunter to really help you peel back the layers of your enterprise and make your adversaries cry. We do want to say thank you for tuning in to this video. Uh, we appreciate your interest in Security Onion and in Hybrid Hunter, and we're looking for your feedback. So if you try out Hybrid Hunter, please let us know what you think of it, uh, and we will try to incorporate and accommodate that feedback into future releases of Hybrid Hunter. In the meantime, if you are interested in things like training, or professional services or hardware appliances preloaded with Security Onion. Uh, please note that we do offer those things at securityonionsolutions.com. So if you have questions about those things, please feel free to reach out to us using the contact information there. So again, we'd like to say thank you for tuning into these YouTube videos. We hope that Security Onion helps you to peel back the layers of your enterprise and make your adversaries cry.